That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Turn it off, and I'm about to add the shrimp. There we go. Three pounds of shrimp. And the reason why I'm turning it off, because this liquid is already hot. The shrimp is going to automatically cook in this gumbo, because this liquid is scalding hot. And you don't want to overcook the shrimp. And that's it, y'all. Good evening. I'm getting ready, getting ready to make a gumbo, y'all. So I'm going to show y'all how I make a roux. Y'all want to see how a blind man make a roux? <laughs> Look, I got my cast iron skillet right here heating up. And I have a cup and a half of vegetable oil in there. And right here, I have two cups of all-purpose flour. Some people do one-to-one -one ratio. You know, some people would have did two cups of oil and two cups of flour. But I'm able to do it in a cup and a half. So, and I'm also going to time myself to see how long it takes for this roux to get chocolate. So, I think, let me see. I think my skill is hot enough. And let me put these two cups of flour in there. So, put two cups of flour. wooden spoon and stir that in but the meanwhile hold up, let me start I'm gonna start my um, stopwatch over here page one and two start button stop okay so I'm gonna start my stopwatch and I'm gonna see how long it takes for me to brown this room all right I'll be right back see that y'all you gotta keep stirring you can't leave this skillet Cannot leave this skillet. I don't like the roux out of the jars. I was taught how to make my own roux. As a sighted person, now I'm doing it as a blind person, and I'm gonna simply go by the smell and show you how blind people use their senses or how I use my senses to know when this roux is going to be ready. You gotta keep on stirring. I'm gonna stop stirring for a few minutes to let y'all hear what time I'm at. Let's see. Seven minutes. Three dot twenty-seven seconds. Seven minutes. What is it? Clap. Seven minutes. Seven dot eighteen seconds. Seven minutes eighteen seconds. So that's how long I've been having it on. Seven minutes seven eighteen minutes, seconds. seconds. Alright, be right back. Seven minutes. I seven got this on medium seconds. high. Seven minutes, twenty-one dot twenty-five seconds. Alright. <clears throat> I'm at the 14 minute mark. So this at the 14 minute mark. I ain't got long to go. I ain't got long to go, y'all. I'm, I'm smelling the smell that I kind of want. All right. You got to keep stirring this bad boy. Don't you turn your back. Don't go Don't go to the bathroom. Don't go, go get no water. Don't do none of that. All right. I'm going to show y'all. All right. I'm still stirring, y'all. We not there yet. And the reason why we're not there yet, because I'm doing it on a medium high fire. If I was doing it on high, it would probably be turning the color. So, we don't have a long left. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the texture, and I'm smelling the smell that I want. I'm going to pretty much know when it's dark brown for some reason. That's just how, that's how our senses are as blind people. We just, once we do something once, it's like we have a, um... Like we got a chip in our head that tell us. And like I said, I'm actually timing myself on this so I can give you all the exact time it took me to cook this on um, medium high. So let me go to my stopwatch and it says I'm at 24 minutes. 42. I'm at 24 minutes. So I've been having this roux on for 24 minutes. 24 minutes, 48 seconds. 24 minutes, 48 seconds. Page one of two. Digital stopwatch. Okay. All right. Now, 
the next time I show you this, I'm going it will be finished and ready. And I will show y'all the time and the color I was looking for. Yeah, baby. About to make me a gumbo. Okay, let me stir this a few more minutes. And I should have that chocolate color brown that I want. Don't burn this. When you burn this, start all over. Just throw the whole thing away and start all over. And you have to stir this all. Ooh, like my arms are already getting tired, but I got a little muscles in my arm. Stir, baby, stir. Stir, baby, stir. We want a good brown gumbo. We don't want no gumbo water. We don't want that light stuff. We want a real gumbo. <laughs> All right, let the blind man not burn himself. <laughs> All right, look, y'all. I should be correct. Let me know if I'm not. The way I'm feeling it, it is stiffening up, and I smell it. It should be a um, it should be a brown color now. Should be a brown color, maybe like the crayon box. Let me see. My time say we are at 32 minutes, 32 minutes which is about minutes, right. 30 32 seconds. minutes. So 32 minutes, I'm going to cut my fire off, and I'm just going to stir. Because that means my, my cast iron skillet is still hot and still cooking it. So, let me make sure I turn, is it off? Yeah, I turned it off. Okay, there we go. So it took about 32 minutes, keep on stirring. And about the 35 minute mark, it should be done. This should be the color that I'm looking for. And that's how a blind man like myself make my roof for my gumbo, y'all. So if I can do it, I know y'all can too. I don't like the smell in here. I don't like I don't like making roof in my house because the smell. Most of the time I get my mama to make make it for me and just put it in a jar for me because roof don't spoil. Get somebody to make it for you and just put it in some jars and you can just store it. All right, keep stirring. This is the color I'm looking for. All right, I moved it off the hot aisle, and there we go, y'all. Let me show my camera. There we go. That's the chocolate, pretty much crayon color chocolate or dark chocolate color that we're looking for. And that is how you make homemade roux. And I checked my timer. It took me 36 minutes and 48 seconds. <laughs> now, if you do it on a high fire, it would take less time. Um, and you just have to tend to it. It's got a constant stir. But because of me being blind, I decided to put it on medium high. And I can control it better without burning it. All right, y'all. So that task there is out of the way. I guess I'll saute down my okra now and get that slime out. There we go. All right. Show y'all my ingredients for my gumbo. There go my fresh okra. That's some okra that I got out of my brother garden when I had it frozen for a few days, so I didn't cut that okra up. Okay, right, first thing first, let's get the slime out of this okra. So, let's uh, put that okra in there. I need it just for like this. So I got about, I have some oil in my skillet. And I'm putting my okra in there. This, this takes a little while. I should have got a bigger, bigger skillet. This takes a little while to cook down. So let's do this okra first. Be right back. I hear my okra frying. Now let me tell you what helped cut the slime. You pour a little bit of white, you pour some white vinegar in here. I'm going to listen. That's enough. You pour you some white vinegar in there. Then you go, go ahead and let this, I got mine on a high heat. You go on, go ahead and let this fry down to get all that slime out. It's going to take about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. That's why I'm getting it out the way first. All right. I'm going to been cooking this down for about 45 minutes. And as y'all see, look, pretty much all the slime is almost out of it. And that's how we want it. Because you don't want no slimy, snotty-ass gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
no more slime. Now let's go to the next step. Oh, and I put a little, I put a little bit of um, Tony Sash in here too, just by the tablespoon. All right, there go my smoked sausage. Get you a good smoked sausage. I don't know what kind that is. That's a Cajun smoked sausage. Right here, I have three pounds of Devein Louisiana shrimp. Right here, I got some fresh crabs. We cut these crabs about two weeks ago and I vacuum sealed them. So there go my crabs. Okay, here go my chicken. I'm gonna do chicken drumsticks and chicken breast. I got it seasoned already in the pan. I'm gonna put it in the oven at the wall and let it brown. Okay. Okay, over here, let's start with my seasonings. I got one whole yellow onion. I got one bell pepper, one large bell pepper cut up. Right here I have green onion, a bunch of green onions cut up. Right here is my celery. Got some celery right there, so y'all can see it. Back here I have um, some parsley. And right here I have about six cloves of garlic. And back here I have two, uh, a gallon of seafood stock that I made. Make my own seafood stock with shrimp shells, the heads, and crab shells, and um, what else? I think that's it. All right. It's chicken in the oven. Got my oven set at 400. And let's put that chicken in there for a few minutes. All right. All right, y'all see me do the roux. Y'all see me get the okra out the way. I got the chicken in the oven. Now let's get some of these grease out of these sausage. I got me another cast iron skillet on the stove. And let's get the, some grease out of this sausage. Alright, be right back. I got family coming over and they want the gumbo. So, we gonna see some gumbo. Alright. Alright, got my sausage fried down. Got it some paper towels so I can saw the rest of that grease. I'm about to put it in the microwave. Alright, that is ready. Now, chicken out the oven, y'all. Look, it's pretty and brown. It's ready. My chicken is ready. So, I have the chicken ready. I have the sausage ready. I have the, um, the okra ready. I have the roux ready. I got the shrimp and the crab in the refrigerator staying cold. And let's put this baby together. Alrighty. I got my chicken drumsticks and my chicken breast. All right, y'all. I'm going to turn my root back to my pot. I got my big magnolite pot out. I call it Big Bertha. So I got my roux in there. Heating back up. Let's add in that onion. Add that all my onions in there. And my hands clean, y'all. We ain't got to keep showing y'all our damn hands when we wash them. That's the onion. Let's put in the green onion. I know somebody cooking my food. I wouldn't want their last ass hands all in my stuff. Let's put that bell pepper in there. Bell pepper. Let's put the celery. There's a lot of seasoning, but it's going to cook down. That's going to get all that good flavor. The celery in there. And let's put the parsley. And we'll put the garlic towards the end. I hope I'm in the... Um, I hope my phone is in the thing. I have a new... I have a new gooseneck. I have a new a new gooseneck phone holder, so I got it propped over the over the pot. I hope it's not steaming up my lens. We'll see, huh? All right, let's saute this down with our roux in there. Let that seasoning get into that roux. 
All right, be right back. All right, y'all. See, it's in that state right there. My seeds almost cooked down. And let's add those six cloves of garlic. I use my garlic press for that garlic because I didn't feel like mincing it. You never want to put your garlic in first because you will burn it. So I'm going to stir that garlic in. Then we're going to put the okra in. Then we're going to put our seafood stock in. In that order. All right. Be right back. All right, y'all. My vegetables has sauteed down in my um in my roux. Now I'm about to add I, my first half a gallon of seafood stock. Homemade seafood stock made by who? Me, me, me. Let's stir this in. Then okay, at the wall, I'm going to add my second one. Let me stir this in right quick. Be right back. It's going to be good, y'all. Flavor. I see how it's fizzing. Let's add the second half a gallon of seafood stock. And I season my because of my because my stock is seasoned already. Y'all see me season the chicken, the okra got some seasoning in it. I don't. I always wait to put more seasoning because I don't want to over season my gumbo. I don't want no salty gumbo. I like flavor, not salt. So all right, got this second half a gallon, and then I'm gonna put another half a gallon. That's gonna be it. So it's gonna be a gallon and a half of liquid that I put to this. I'm going to put the top on after a while let this cook down. Then we're going to add our stuff back to it. But you know why we at this step right here? Let me go ahead and add my um. let me go ahead and add my okra to it. I can't add my okra. Let me get this spoon out of there. So I'm going to add there we go. Let me go and add that okra. Okra is also another thickening agent, if y'all didn't know. So, let's add that okra in there. And we will be back. Let me tell you something. It takes about 2 hours and 30 minutes, almost 3 hours to make a good gumbo. If you get a gumbo that's made in 30 to 45 minutes, huh? must be instant and everything cooked already. Alright. Be back with the next procedure. Ne not next procedure. Next step. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Now let's add a half a gallon of water. All right, stir this in. Now I'm about to just let this simmer for about 45 minutes. An hour. Okay. Put my top on here and let it simmer. Okay, it's been simmering for an hour. I gave it a little taste. We're going to add two teaspoons of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of slap your mama, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. So we're going to start with all of that. Give it a little heat. Right. I say we didn't need much seasoning in it because my stock was already seasoned. So I'm gonna stir that seasoning in there. Also, let's add in. Oh, ain't that pretty, y'all? Uh, oh, it, it tastes so good. When you make your own stock for stuff like this, it tastes so much better than using chicken broth out the store. Make it some seafood or some shrimp broth, broth stock, I mean. And make it some chicken stock with chicken backs or something like that. Okay, now I'm going to add in, gonna add in my chicken breast. Add my chicken breast back in there. And let me add these sausages in there.
shaking the camera. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so put my chicken breast and my sausage back in there. Be right back. All right. Let's add the drum. Let's add the drumsticks to it. And the last thing we have to add towards the end is the shrimp and the crab. So we're putting our chicken in there. My mom and my sister and my niece and my brother-in-law coming to eat with me. So Making them a good gumbo. That's all. Okay. It's all right. Got the chicken legs in there. All right. Next, we'll put at the end, the only thing we have to put is the crab and the shrimp, y'all. I'll be right back. This is a good gumbo. Been almost three hours. Going on two hours and some change left over. All right. All right, y'all need no more seasoning in this pot. Let's add these nice crabs. Nice blue crabs. Straight from Louisiana. These came from um, Cameron or Hackberry. One of the places. Cameron, Hackberry, Sulphur. crabs in there. All right. Let me stir them in. That's going to add another level of flavor. Then last will be our shrimp. All right, y'all. Now I'm about to add the shrimp in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this gumbo off. So I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it off, and I'm about to add the shrimp. And there we go. Three pounds of shrimp. And the reason why I'm turning it off, because this liquid is already hot. The shrimp is going to automatically cook in this gumbo, because this liquid is scalding hot. And you don't want to overcook the shrimp. And that's it y'all this gumbo is ready so I got the pot off let the shrimp cook in it okay. then I'm going to show you all a final what you call and there goes your gumbo now I'm going to call this a combination gumbo because if you do sausage and chicken gumbo it'll just be chalk I mean I'm sorry it'll just be chicken and sausage and maybe some okra you could do an okra chicken and sausage gumbo, and it will definitely even include those three items. But here, I call this a combination gumbo because I did the okra, the sausage, the chicken, and I put seafood in it. I put the shrimp and the crabs. So this would be a seafood slash chicken slash whatever. Combination gumbo, whatever you want to put in it. Okay. And there goes Zeke's gumbo, y'all. So y'all just seen a blind man do gumbo from beginning to end. I don't want to stir it up too much because I don't want to break up my chicken legs. But there we go. There go my gumbo. Okra, shrimp, crab, sausage, and I'm missing something. Chicken. There we go, y'all. Have a good one. Hope my family like it. <laughs> they will. <laughs>